Another uh, aspect of safe by default, what happens if I have 10 million orders and I want to show them? How would most people do that? Rings any bell? Bells? I think it should ring lots of bells. Uh, how many results will this take? Anyone can guess? All of them. You can most certainly know that. This is going to return all of the results in the database. The really fun part is that in, as developers, we actually don't have that, mu mu that much data in the database. In production, Ah, this is so much fun. By the way, both problems uh, have a very interesting solution, a, a very interesting uh, aspect. Who do they punish? Yes. Not the end users, specific end users. If let's say that we're building YouTube, or you know, no, no, let's say that we're building an online shop, and I'm a customer that only made one order. How fast is the system for me? Really fast. How fast is the system for the strategic customer that made thousands and thousands of orders? Oh my God. They, they, they've taken to order by phone because then we have to work with our system instead of them, which is fairly self-defeating. So the problem with those issues, those issues, by the way, are called select N plus one an unbounded result set. And the problem with them, they usually impact the worst, our most important customers, which makes a whole lot of sense from our perspective, right? You're an important customer, therefore we treat you like dirt. Okay, so in RavenDB, you cannot have an unbounded result set. If you don't specify a take, we will specify one for you for 128, which is big enough for most things and small enough that you will fill it fairly early. But you know what? Developers are crafty and cool. How would you deal with something like that? That if you don't specify a take, a one, will, will, one will be defined for you? Oh, I wish it was just easy. I fixed the RavenDB bug. <laughs> okay. What would be the implication of doing that? You're back to unbounded results set. Therefore, RavenDB has an extra proportion. And if you give it a value that is over 1024, basically it goes like this. Okay, and this is enforced on the server level. Now, there is a configuration element that you can set that we says, okay, have a bigger max, max page size. But by default, it's 1024. That's a good thing, trust me. Uh, and finally, it's really, really fast. It doesn't. It will not. So if you do this. So it won't override the one. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is actually, sorry.
This is happening on the server. Yeah, but the, what's happening on the client, how does it exactly operate? It doesn't. This is, you say, on the server side, you send me the uh, page size. I look at your page and it says, ha, I laugh at your in.max value, take, to, take to 1024. Okay? If you actually care, we can look at the code. But that's the basic idea. That we are going to ignore you if you specify a value over the max page size, which default to 1024. More questions? How does that work with, uh, say you add a property to your objects and now you need to actually update your schema, if you will, I know it's schema free, but uh, update all the objects in the database. Given that there is no unbounded result sets, would you, how, would you, how would you do that? Two ways. One, use paging. Two, there is the ability to do something called set-based updates. And set-based updates actually allow you to do that sort of things. Say, given this query, given this query clause, execute this patch operation. It's very, logically, it's very simple. It's very uh, uh, similar to an update statement in SQL. More questions? OK. What is document? You can see that we have documents of growing complexities. By the way, you see that on the blog example, we actually have a user zero, user slash ender. So now we have references to other, uh, to other documents. Let's, look how, let's see how this looks like in here. Okay, so now we have this guy. Notice a couple of interesting things. Hmm. 